I want to talk to you about the Brooks Lo Alco Brooks Locomotive Company in Dunkirk. I'm sure you probably have heard of it or aware of it. And I want to tell you a little bit about some of the history. Now, you might detect a little bit of a southern accent in my voice. That's because my Vita, my railroad Vita, will show a lot of experience down south. And we'll talk about that in a second. People, I, I think that my mother must have had me in a railroad passenger car. Uh, at birth because uh, I was building my first model locomotive when I was seven years old. I apprenticed at the age of 13 with the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. I later went on, and you'll excuse me, uh, at my age, at my advanced age, which is over 150 years old, I can occasionally need to refer to some papers here. And I'll tell you a little bit about the, uh, how I moved up in the railroad <coughs> industry. I was born in 1868 in Reading, Pennsylvania, which is south of here. I told you about building my first locomotive when I was nine. From, uh, after I was an apprentice, I began, I, I was an erecting shop foreman for the B&O, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, in 1887. General machine shop foreman down in Cumberland, Maryland, and later a master mechanic for the Atlanta coastline in Florence, South Carolina. And it was the first time I really hit hot weather, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I appreciate being able to come back to you today in, in, in such a, a venue, such a building, with mechanical air. Because let me tell you, down in Florence, South Carolina, back in the early part of that century, it was hot. And in fact, you can imagine how hot it was in the Brooks locomotive plant. So you might have seen me start off my day with their shirt and tie, but before too long, I'd be loosening it up, and I'd be rolling up my sleeves, which I'm going to do now. Uh, because I was a kind of a guy that would just kind of jump in where I was needed. I always liked, since I started out young as an apprentice, uh, I never wanted to stay in the office that long during the day. I was a hands-on uh, general manager. Now, I moved from Florence, South Carolina to become general superintendent of motor power for the Louisville and Nashville line. So I did spend a good part of my early career down south. I moved up to Patterson, New Jersey to become uh, superintendent of the locomotive works there and also at the Cook Lo Locomotive Works in Patterson. Then I came to Dunkirk and that was in 1911 and I served as general manager at Alco Brooks in Dunkirk from 1911 till 1930 when I retired and the, first, the last locomotive that came off the line came off in 1928. Now, Ialco Brooks continued to produce various things and parts uh, all the way through World War II. Um, they produced parts for artillery guns, thermal products, oil refinery equipment, and even parts to the Triborough Bridge in New York City. Now, we were quite an expansive plant at that time, a huge plant at that time. We had 20 acres, we covered 20 acres, 34 buildings, and over 2,000 employees. We had huge cranes that would lift these locomotives up when they were produced. I mean, the whole locomotive to transport. We were proud to say that we held the record at that time. We could take a order for a locomotive and produce it in 15 days. 15 days. So, I retired in 1930. I still kept producing model locomotives, and I was uh, particularly interested in wooden locomotives, and I produ actually produced one that was six feet long. One of the things, you can still see my house, by the way. My house is on 60th West 4th Street in Dunkirk. Uh, even though I was born in Reading, Pennsylvania, spent a lot of time down south, I settled here and I died here. Remarkably well preserved for some. <laughs> Just came back from you today. Um, uh, and I always felt that Dunkirk was the place that I ended up in. I have a special uh, a space in my heart for Dunkirk and Brooks Locomotive. And I want to read to you something that was printed on my obituary that will prove to you what, uh, what the Brooks Locomotive, uh, what it meant to be. Uh, at that turn of the century to be part of this process that was going on, not just in Dunkirk, but all across the country, this, this, this form of industry that's taking place. His men loved him. He was personally acquainted with all of the thousands who labored beneath him and with him. He was one of the nation's builders. 
He was one of the last survivors of an industrial age of captains of industry who worked with their men on the basis of friendship and high mutual respect. And um, we have here some things that I would like to pass around to you, give you an idea. Here is a, uh, a poster for the Brooks locomotive, and this is a type of a locomotive that, that we produced that you can take a look at and refer to. Uh, I want to thank you for being here this morning, and I would like to pass the Diaz on to um, uh, an acquaintance of mine, uh, Captain Patrick Barrett, who's going to talk to you, a local boy, is going to talk to you a little bit about some of his experiences in the Civil War. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. As you know, I'm Captain Patrick Barrett. I was born in Ireland in 1832. My father was at the age of five. I came to America with my mother and the rest of my siblings. I was poor. I was Irish. I was Catholic. Three strikes against me. But luck was on my side. I took various jobs for the railroad, eventually becoming a conductor. I then moved to Dunkirk in 1850, where I became postmaster of the village. I also commanded the Jackson Guard, a local militia group. Once we heard that the Civil War broke out, I assisted in joining and collecting as many men as I could, mostly Irish lads, and we became Company E, 72nd Regiment, Excelsior Brigade. We left for Washington, D.C. We guarded the Maryland coastline. We engaged the Confederates. There I was wounded, just below my kidney. I suffered for 22 hours. I eventually succumbed to my wounds, which I was promptly brought back to Dunkirk, where I laid in my father-in-law's home. He was the president of Lakeshore Bank. Mass was held here at St. Mary's. After the Mass, Various groups and organizations followed me in an honor guard to St. Mary's, where I was buried. I left behind a wife and an infant child. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice.